What's up, people? It's your girl, Adela. Thank you so much, guys, for clicking the thumbs up in the last two videos. I'm so grateful to you guys. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's really helping us with subscription. You know, when you guys click the thumbs up, other people see the show and hopefully subscribe after watching. Thank you so much for clicking it. So please click it again in this video, even if you're watching on TV. Daddy, mommy, uncle, auntie, you can pause it to click uh, thumbs up on your phone and then come back to keep watching on TV. So thank you so much. <laughs> Have you guys seen that video of my very own father, the presidential aspirant, Governor Rochas Okorochas of Imo State? I want to say to you that I was Rochas before I became a governor. In fact, governor made me poorer. Okay, that's subject to debate or what do you guys think? And, and that is actually not where I want you to play. Can you just play the video that I asked you to play? Uh, there's no governor, only government, till death. Who can measure up what I've done in that moment? State? Not even up to 20% of what I've done. My dear, just go straight to the most important thing that he said. I'm not about to debate whether he did this or not. Let's just go to... Is it Imo State government? How much is the Imo State government money? Imo State is really owing me. Let me say it here because I never collected my security vote. I'm supposed to collect from Imo State now 8 billion naira if I have to make claims for security votes I did not collect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh -huh, that one, that one. Thank you very much. Did you guys catch that? For years, we've been asking our governors in Nigeria, how much exactly do you guys get as security vote every single month? They refuse to tell us how much they're getting. So they get this much? According to Governor Ogoro Chas, my father and my God. He was the governor for eight years in Imo State, and now he's claiming that he did not get the security vote. If he meant that he didn't get security vote for all eight years, that means that they get one billion naira every year as security vote in Imo State. And that's not the same across borders. Some states get more than that, some get less. It's different from their salaries and their allowances. It has nothing to do with their salaries at all. Why should you care about this, you may be asking? Well, because security vote is a monthly allowance that is allocated to each state's governor for the sole purpose of funding security services within that state. Anything that has to do with security in order to ensure that you can sleep well at night in your state. Now, you may be wondering why it's so hard for us to verify how much they are actually getting for security vote. Well, it is because nobody tells them exactly how much they should take for security votes. It's, it's not like they are given an envelope that says security votes. No. From the money that has been allocated from the federal government, each governor is able to now take what they would use for security vote. Unfortunately, they don't tell us exactly how much they take for security vote, and they usually would take it before they even pay workers' salaries. So that means they have the liberty to take however much they want to take, which is why it's hard to even go by the numbers that they have on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. But going by Wikipedia, this is how much it's possible it's more than that or it's not up to that. Like I said, nobody is really regulating how much they can take for security votes, but we'll go by the numbers on uh, Wikipedia. You know, my first question when the governor said that they are owing him <laughs> for security vote is, so how did he manage to provide security as the governor of Imo State when he was the governor of Imo State? Is he saying that he spent his own personal money to provide security for the people of Imo State? I mean, that would be... A bit weird for a Nigerian governor to spend his personal money when he's getting security votes. So I don't know how much I believe His Excellency with that statement. Hey, I'm just saying. And this money, they are giving this money in order to ensure that they prevent kidnappings, robberies, assassinations, banditry. The federal government pays the police, of course, but with this money, your state governor is supposed to ensure that the police in your state have all the gadgets and everything that they need in order for them to succeed in their assignment, from getting CCTVs, you know, like cameras everywhere, drones, race, uh, robbers or kidnappers, to getting computers, getting them nice cars. They should take care of security personnel such that they won't have to be collecting bribes on the roadside and also ensure that you are able to sleep well at night. The only problem is governors in Nigeria are not required to account for how this money is spent. So, of course, many of them pocket this money and nobody asks them about it. They don't even tell you exactly how much it is. That's how bad it is. I mean, look at this headline, for example. Governors, local government chairmen, pocket over over 375 <laughs> Zion.
Look at this headline, for example. Governors, local government chairman, pocket over 375 billion naira security vote annually every single year. And yet insecurity persists in these states. This money is not for them. They're supposed to spend it on security in our state. But listen to what Governor Okorocha said. Imo you know, State is really owing me. Let me say it here because I never collected my security vote. Imo you know, State is owing me. Did you hear that? Just like other governors, he believes that this money is his money. They're getting salaries and allowances besides all this. You know, Wikipedia listed how much each state is getting. They couldn't list all the states. For some states, they wrote that they have no record. I suppose I didn't believe it because I didn't have a way of verifying what's on Wikipedia. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. The problem is we didn't have a way of verifying the figures on Wikipedia because the governors don't tell us exactly how much they get it until one of the governors confirmed it. I'm talking about Governor El Rufai of Kaduna where thousands of people have been killed, especially in southern Kaduna, over ethnicity, over religion. According to a statement that uh, he released in 2017 when he was dead, I believe he was dead by the National Assembly, he was dead to publish how he spends his um, security vote. At that time was when we knew that Kaduna gets about 4.8 billion naira every year in the name of security. The question now is, do you guys think that the governor of Kaduna State is truly spending 4.8 billion naira every year in order to stop this ongoing crisis in Kaduna? You know, if we go by the other figures on Wikipedia besides uh, that of Kaduna, Niger State, where the bandits are kidnapping school kids and teachers, kidnapping the entire school and students, Niger State is getting 15 billion naira every year to ensure that there is security in Niger State. Zamfara, 7.2 billion a year. That's different from what the federal government is still sending them on top of that. Or your state, 1 billion naira every month, 12 billion in a year. And, and speaking of all your state, I'm sure you guys must have seen that story about how some armed robbers operated in broad daylight in Ibadan, killing police officers, killing bystanders. It's so heartbreaking. The robbers were better equipped than the police. Here is a video of the aftermath. This is not graphic or anything. We're not showing you the shooting or people that were shot. This is just like filming some of the bystanders uh, who were on the street when this happened. See the bullet van? The bullet van? The bullet van? As you can see the cartridges, the police was shot. You can see the hillocks. Police was shot. Calm down. They are gone. You have escaped. Calm down. You have escaped. Calm down. You have escaped. You have escaped. You are the luckiest. You have escaped. Just imagine the trauma that these people are going through. You know, a lot of times when we talk about stories like this, we don't always remember the wives of those who died. Those police officers, their wives, their children. In I mean, they, they all had plans for this year. You know, we were all just last month saying Happy New Year. They all had plans for this year, not knowing that this was going to happen. Do you really think that the government of your state is spending $1 billion every month on ensuring security, ensuring safety in your state? I doubt it. And it wasn't just the police officers that were killed. They killed some bystanders as well, people that were just transporting. They shot an Okada man. It's just heartbreaking. Asimo, your state gets 12 billion naira in a year. River State, 1.5 billion every month. That is 18 billion in a year. Akwa Ibon, 1.8 billion every month. That is 21 billion in a year. All I'm saying is the federal government definitely has a lot to do in order to ensure security, but it's not just the federal government. Many of our governors in Nigeria don't really want security in their states. If they do, they will spend this money justly. They will not pocket this money. They will ensure that there are CCTV cameras in different places in the state. They will ensure there are street lights in all the places that where it should be. There are so many things that they can do in order to equip the policemen and women. They should be so well equipped that robbers will be afraid of operating. How much is Lagos getting? 1.4 billion monthly. That is 17 billion naira every year. You see, we really need to start asking questions of our leaders. Enugu allegedly gets 7.2 billion annually. And I'm sure that you guys must have also seen that video of a terrified police officer in Enugu who was calling whether his superior, so he was calling for help, I don't know, after three of his colleagues were killed by armed robbers. See, that should not be. We've lost so many of our security personnel because governors refuse to do the needful with the money that they have been given. Now, speaking of Lagos, I just want to greet my father, especially, you know, Governor Babaji Desan, for this uh, humanitarian act. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve? 
How old are you? Nine. Nine. So where you go? You are going to grind pepper yes. for your parents there. Eh? Yes. Where do they stay? Antony. Eh? Antony. Antony. Yes. How can I get to your parents now? Do you know their number? Thank you, Jared, Your Excellency. You know, do well, sir. Coincidentally, this happened on his way to launch a welfare scheme in Lagos. I mean, I'm very sure that it was just a coincidence. It's, you know, it's, no, no, it wasn't like they were, you know, <laughs> they staged it or anything. So the man meant well, as far as I'm concerned. But for some reason, Nigerians are not impressed. That is what is bothering me right now. In fact, they are saying that, well, he did it because elections are coming. He wants to be re-elected. I said, how about people here better on the Nigerians? Have the fear of God. As a matter of fact, I was shocked to see my father, <laughs> you know, our big zaddy, Mr. Macaroni. The man released a skit shortly after that incident, and that skit, for some reason, reminds me of uh, the governor's selfless act. Ah. Why this? Why this? Why this? Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello, guys. Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry to disturb you. Uh -uh. Look at this. Imagine I'm just driving. I saw the two of you. I said, no. This is wrong. Yeah. We need to do better. You know, you can't be on the street. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> no, pressman, you don't need to record this, you know. No, no, no. What? Record this. <laughs> I said, it's okay. Ah, you are doing well, you are doing well. It's okay, it's okay. Um, You can find a full screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what was that? Was I not promising them quality education and things? I hope you didn't get all of that in the video. I only got some parts. Huh? No, what, what, you have to cut out the juice okay, part. Yes, I'll cut huh? it. Yes, sir. <laughs> But, uh, we'll put the link to the full skit in the description below. Ah, Mr. Macaroni. I was expecting for you to say, that you are doing well, you are, do <laughs> you are doing well. Ah, and I can let me know that you are in case you've seen that. <laughs> It's just that my father has never seen out of school children roaming the streets of Lagos. Never, he has never seen them. How long has he been governor? Three years. You see, it's just been three years. Three years is too short for you to notice out of school kids on your way to work, to government house, back to your home or to functions in and out of Lagos. Three years is uh, too short. So Eda Kuntura Long caught him some slack. Now, according to UNICEF, there are more than 13 million out of school children in Nigeria. And according to the Lagos State Universal Basic Education, board. More than two million of those out of school kids are roaming the streets of Lagos every day and night. So I'm just here to defend my father, like I was saying. It is a good thing, dear daddy, when you come down from your convoy to talk to Lagosians like these girls, we are very happy for you. Maybe if there are more than two million of them, my father would have noticed before that day. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, daddy, it's okay. Let me defend you. It is my job. I'm here to defend you. Me, I like the fact that you came down to talk to Lagosians, those girls. You know what I mean? <laughs> so please, please keep it up, Jari. Keep up the momentum. Don't mind the enemies of progress, my father. Forward ever, backward what? Backward never. And when is your peace work again? Because, you know, we are looking for any opportunity for you to also talk to us about October 10, 2020. You know, things like uh, who ordered the shooting at Lucky Gate, you know, things like that. And the reason that I'm saying this, my father, because I'm not an enemy of progress. <laughs> I'm here to defend you. I'm on your side. But the reason I'm bringing this up is that I have noticed it looks like a lot of Nigerians are not appreciating all your efforts in other areas, like this one that you did, you came down, you saw two, not one girl. You, they are not appreciating it like, as they should, simply because the lucky gate issue is being swept under the carpet. You see, we can help you to remove the carpet, my father, <laughs> so that you can see us as well. Just like you finally saw those two girls, you know, <laughs> that were going to grind pepper. I'm very, very happy for those girls, by the way. They got scholarship as in, you know. Special, yeah, yeah, Pedro is to your state. We know how special he is to Nigeria. Wow, not today. Mm -mm, get deep behind me. Satan, I'm not, I don't have your time. You are a Christian here, you are a Muslim here. Thank God for the gift of governor. I said not today. What exactly is the problem of some of these pastors? What is this? Like seriously, what else do you want us to say? How long would we talk about this on the show? What else do you want us to say? For you to know this is not right? If you guys have something to say to this man of God, please put it in the comments. He will read it. <laughs> Thank God for the gift of governor. Yahya Adosa David Bello. Father, we thank you for this gift. Yahya Bello is a gift. Ah, <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Anyways, you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. 
Moving on to Zimbabwe, guys. For the second time in 20 years, it looks like Zimbabwe is moving away from their local currency and back towards the US dollars. As you guys know, Zimbabwe has long been struggling with its economy. Remember that time when they printed bogus bills, bills that were worth nothing. At that time, they printed millions, they printed billions. As a matter of fact, $100 billion, one note, they even printed trillion. At, at that time, that, this is $100 trillion. People were paying for mundane things like bread with huge amounts of cash. So they left their own currency and they started spending US dollars. And they've since gone back back to their currency after that, although the US dollar was always preferred by many. But you know, in the last two years, Zimbabwe has actually managed to post negative numbers in their economic growth. According to reports from the Zimbabwean government, their economy went down over 8% from 2019 to 2020, which is double the average economic loss of the bottom average of countries. Now, to put that in perspective, their economy went down negative by 8%. That's not like coming in last in the race. That's like not showing up at all for the race. I don't know if if you guys understand what I'm saying. So in a meeting between 100 different chief executive officers at an assembly in Harare, the capital of Zimbabwe, only one officer said that he would prefer to stay with the Zimbabwean dollars and the others would like to go back to spending US dollars. And besides the fact that their economy is really struggling, one of the arguments is the fact that when you go outside of Zimbabwe, you can't do much with the Zimbabwean currency. You cannot exchange it to another currency. You can't spend it. So it's limited to Zimbabwe. But you cannot blame these officials because right now in Zimbabwe, there's so little confidence in their local Zimbabwean currency, their local Zimbabwean dollar. They call it dollars as well. As a matter of fact, the supermarkets, restaurants, and stores would openly offer you discounts on your bill if you would pay them in US dollars. And this is of course leading to a decrease in local demand for the local currency. It makes me really sad and it makes me wonder, I think actually getting better since Robert Mugabe stepped down as president of Zimbabwe or are things getting worse? But it should also be noted that there is no official declaration on this plan to go back to US dollar as of the time that we are recording. Governor John Mugadia, for example, is adamant that they will be sticking with the Zimbabwean dollar for the foreseeable future, even though this has happened before in most Zimbabweans' lives. So honestly, are things getting better in Zimbabwe? Are they getting worse? I would love to hear from my Zimbabwean people. What do you guys want? Do you want the US dollar? Do you want your dollar? And why? Also, are things getting better since since Robert Mugabe stepped down. And for those of us that are not from Zimbabwe, what do you think is happening in Zimbabwe? Because at that time it looked like, oh, Mugabe was the issue. Once Mugabe steps down, things will get better, but it doesn't look like things are getting better. What do you have to say about this? You guys not know much, guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Moving on to Mozambique, let's start with the good news. Guys, I'm really, really excited because Mozambique has embarked on what so many people are calling the largest reforestation project in Africa. This is for the mangroves in Sofala as well as Zambezia. This reforestation project will spread across 185 thousand acres of land which is equivalent to planting about 50 to 100 million trees and if all these trees survive and mature it would be an equivalent of removing 50,000 cars off the road which is a massive help in reducing carbon emissions. That's amazing. I mean, there are so many benefits to planting trees. As you guys know, besides providing shades and preventing floods, it will increase biodiversity. It will protect and enrich fisheries, and it will also create jobs. And I like the fact that they're doing this not just for themselves, but for the future generation coming up so that the environment will still be there for them when they grow up. Anyway, we're so proud of Mozambique, as well as Blue Forest, the UAE company that is helping them in this project. So thanks to you guys. Now still on Mozambique. Now this is a sad story, but the fight against the insurgents is still ongoing in Mozambique, especially around the Cabo Delgado region in northern Mozambique. Southern African leaders on Tuesday said the bloc's military mission had made progress in beating back a militant insurgency in northern Mozambique. The security situation in Cabo Delgado is improving which has allowed for some internally displaced people to return to their homes. 
For those who may have not been following or for those who are not familiar with what's been happening in Mozambique, even though we've talked about it in the past, it all started in 2017. We're talking about young people who began uh, the attack in their own hometown, in their hometown called Muzimboa. And at first, the police killed some of them and everything died out, only for them to regroup and resurface after some months with more weapons and their own uniforms and more determination just to kill. They've killed thousands of people. Wakija ina maana kodi kuu yao ndio hiyo. Ukisikia Allahu Akbar utua. Sio kiwo kiwasikia Allahu Akbar utua. Ukimira ukiwa nemba wa kusinja. They've displaced thousands of people and they've kidnapped thousands of people. When women are taken to Musimbwa, first they are treated like slaves. They cook, fetch water, are taken for military training. Then they marry the Al Shababs. They can no longer dress like us. They have to wear the burqa. Only the eyes are left visible. Wow, it's so sad. Can you imagine? Now, the international community is helping Mozambique in the fight against this uh, insurgents, this terrorist. Rwanda sent soldiers. The president of South Africa recently met with their president. We cannot show you guys, but there are so many graphic videos of what's happening. They're just quite graphic, so we cannot show them on the show. But it would be really nice to hear from people from Mozambique. Do you guys believe the president when he said that progress has been made and that the conflict is becoming less dangerous or not? Let's hear from you guys. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So, the presidential race for the upcoming Nigerian election is getting really heated, yes. First of all, there has been several reports that my very own father, the vice president, <laughs> Professor, uh, Professor Osimba Joe, would declare his presidential ambition after the APC convention. And we were like, Silo Tony, Abilo Iro, you know, we were all like uh, expecting, as in, <laughs> only for my father to come out and deny the report. So, he spokesperson, that is uh, my father, me, <laughs> Pastor Laulu Akande. The man denied the report and said that it's false report and any information on activities and actions of the VP will come directly from his office. So we are waiting to see whether or not the vice president would run or not. Meanwhile, some people in Elor in Kuala State are already campaigning and celebrating for my father, the vice president. <laughs> As in, it's a serious something. When people endorse you in a learning, you have arrived. Also, you must... <laughs> Also, you must have seen that headline, you know, that my father, that is uh, Uncle Dele Mamadou, went to his hometown after 49 years to declare his intention to run for president. Chief Dele Mamadou, who arrived in Hewe amidst jubilation, was received by the members of his age group, who immediately initiated him to be part of them. I know that we are very serious. I'm not joking. People thought, oh, he wants to be senator, not me. No, anybody who knows me knows I don't fool around. I want to be the president because I know I can change Nigeria for the better. It's all over the media, you know, people abusing him, saying, ah, it's all because he wants to win. Even with that, they will still not vote for him. He will still not win. And I just felt like I should talk about it on the show. <laughs> I, have, I, I didn't talk to him or anything. I just wanted to say it's not like he didn't want to go home for 49 years. He actually explained that he was kidnapped from his hometown. Him and his sister were kidnapped in 1973 after his father's death. And so he didn't feel safe. And, and that's why he's not been back since then. I believe that he claims he lived as his hometown. But we just found out that he's originally from Ihevbe in a one east local government area of Edo State. I'm really happy that he was able to go back home after so long. 49 years is a long time, man. Anyway, I'm also glad to introduce another aspirant by the name Mrs. Patience Undidiki, the former chairman of Nigerians in Diaspora Organization in America, which is NIDOA USA. This is exciting. You guys know I'm all about women standing up and saying enough is enough and getting involved. Amen, somebody. It was a moment of happiness for the people of AKK community in Iniguebe local government area of Edo State as one of their own, Patience Undidiki, an indigenous of the community who visited home from the United States of America 
to declare her intention to run for the presidency come 2023. So she is running uh, for president under the PRP party. And this Saturday, actually, February 12th, she has organized for an online town hall event scheduled with Nigerians in the diaspora. All the Nigerians in the diaspora, if anybody is interested, this is the time of the Zoom meeting. Anybody that is interested can join. She would like to discuss peace in Nigeria, equity, and wealth creation. So please join if you are able to. And as Elections are getting closer in Nigeria. I would love to have as many candidates as would be willing to come on my show live so you guys can ask them questions like you normally do whenever I bring a guest on the show and you can ask those candidates questions about why they want to be president. And speaking of live shows, please, please do not forget to join me this Saturday, February 12th. This is the time I will be hosting the owner of Terra Developers, Uncle Kola Ashiru Balogun, and we will be selecting the two lucky winners of the free stay at a luxurious hotel just in time for valentine's and of course if anybody is interested in his real estate company that would be an opportunity to ask him any questions whatsoever that you would like to ask i'm so excited for the winners in advance congratulations you are taking your significant order to a nice hotel near where you live Woo! just in time for valentine's father father <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And if you're yet to, this Monday is Valentine's Day. So please call helpmeworker.com or go on their website to order. They can still deliver cooked food or cake to the doorstep of, of someone that you admire for Valentine's Day. This is a picture of what they've been delivering to people. So if you have been secretly admiring somebody, this is your opportunity to express your expression. <laughs> To express your interest in the in the somebody, just call help me work out, or go on their website and order this kind of platter. You know, they can deliver something like this to the doorstep of somebody that you're admiring, or they can even take cake to the doorstep of someone that you're admiring. Okay, okay. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button. Please, please do not forget to press the thumbs up if you've seen this show, especially if you like it and you can share it. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see you later. Peace out.